Um, so we, since we've talked about black helicopters and conspiracy theories and saltwater, there, there's also a pervasive conversation about the contractors being overzealous in their spraying and getting paid by the gallon. You want to address right. that? Yeah, the, the state contracts are, the contractors are paid by the hour on that. Uh, it's just, I mean, open records request on that, you know, can easily find it. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, they get paid by the hour. I reviewed the contracts, reviewed the proposals. Yes, it's on a per hour basis on, on it. Uh, we, we have had some issues with some of the contractors in the past. Uh, we had some issues with one of them up at Lake Fork uh, spraying some willow trees. Uh, and, and we address that as soon as we see it now, because there's six of us, like we talked about, we can't be everywhere at the same time. So if anglers see stuff, well, you know, we ask that, you know, take a picture or even better yet, shoot a video of it and send it to us. And then that way we can address it. You know, we, we have that evidence to go up again, you know, with our contractors and, you know, Hey man, this is, this isn't what we're asking for. Uh, you know, and if, if it's, you know, just a, a complete egregious, you know, violation or whatever we we can we can move from that contractor sure we've done that in the past okay so let's talk about uh, eradication and and because you talked about when we talked <laughs> before about you realize that you may not or you're in most instances you're not trying to completely eradicate any plant right right uh if we can't eradicate salvinia the only way we can do it is if we catch it early and we keep it contained we have floating booms uh that we can keep salvinia contained uh, for various reasons but one of them is is a new infestation if that's the case then what we'll do is contain that salvinia and we may go in in one area and completely knock out all of that vegetation knowing that we can get rid of you know eradicate salvinia but once it gets out of containment and it becomes lake wide then it just becomes part of the the vegetation community it, um, you know, trying to go and eradicate it, you're not going to do it. You're trying an eradication on, you know, a, a complex lake like Caddo or Toledo Bend or Sam Rayburn, something like that, or even a smaller lake, you know, like Lake Nacogdoches. All we're going to do is more harm than good. Uh, you know, Lake Nacogdoches, rarely do we spray. We're relying completely on the weevil to do the majority of the heavy lifting up there. The only time we'll spray at Lake Nacogdoches is once it gets down and it starts getting in front of the houses. But otherwise, that entire upper end has got salvinia scattered all throughout. But it also has weevils scattered in through that, too. John, I know it's before your time, but uh, Conroe's grass population pretty much got wiped out with grass carp, right? Yes. What, what do you know about that? And, and what do you think uh, at a high level was taken from what happened over there? The initial stocking in the 80s was all, was all a, a legislative stocking. Uh, you know, Parks and Wildlife uh, was involved with that, but A and M did a lot of the, the the research on that that initial stocking of it, uh, and then the grass carp stockings here lately are just just for the simple fact. Conroe's going to be one of those lakes we just can't have hydrilla in it. It it grows. It's, it can be aggre extremely aggressive in, in Conroe. You have a lot of houses around it. Each one of those houses has a fertilized yard. Then that produces runoff, and, and we end up with a lot of extra nutrients in there that are absorbed by that hydrilla plant. Now, the, the fish, it, it's, that's just the way that one is. There's that lake. There, you know, a lot of political input or you know, pressure from those homeowners in, in that that hydrilla is just not an answer there but that fisheries office has worked their tails off on getting some native vegetation back in there uh and, and it's i mean we have a lot of native plants way back in the in the upper rate reaches of it uh you know around no longer around these bulkheads bulkheads tend to you know be detrimental to the the sure. plants because of all the wave action associated with it but you start to get to some of those natural shorelines way up lake and you're seeing a lot more of the native vegetation in, in that reservoir. All right. So that's a great lead in then to another conversation you and I had about what, uh, did, did I recall that you told me that the, that your counterparts in Louisiana are in fact trying to plant and cage some hydrilla in Toledo at this point? There, what they were doing was some native plant uh, plantings 
of high, or of I say high drill of native vegetation there. So they went in with cages. Uh, they put cages, native vegetation in, put a cage around it to keep the herbivores all, away from it. Uh, then they put just empty cages, no vegetation in it to see what native or what resident plants, native and non-native, would grow in that cage. Uh, and then they planted some plants outside of a cage, you know, to show the impact of the herbivores. Well, in the cages with the native plants, the native plants flourished. In the empty cage, they actually saw hydrilla starting to grow back. So now we go back to that whole, you know, tuber turion, you know, section that we had talked about earlier. You know, obviously in some places in the lake, we still have an abundance, enough abundance of it that we're getting the regrowth of it. And then on Louisiana stuff where they planted the native plants outside of the cages, those things got grazed pretty quick. And, and now you don't even see the, the plants that they had planted because of the herbivore activity. What are the herbivores? I mean, turtles, nutria, I mean, crawfish, you know, you're going to have a lot of stuff uh, in there, you know, ducks, a lot of waterfowl, you know, will we'll go in and, and, and eat, you know, some of these different plants. Those dang coots. Yeah, coots for sure. Although coots are good when, when you're fishing because they can show you where the deep mats of hydrilla are. Right. Yeah. And it's still one of the wildest things is to watch an eagle go after coots. <laughs> yes. Yes. They, 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 they will flat drown and eat a coot in a heartbeat. So, mm -hmm. okay. So John, let's, let's sort of close with this thought. And, uh, you made a comment earlier about, the um, you know, if you see a, and, and guys don't send videos just because you see a contractor spraying, but if you see something that seems unusual to you in that spraying process, certainly let the guys know at Texas Department of Wildlife, but what else spurs you guys to take action from an aquatic vegetation standpoint and, 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 how does that process work for you? The one thing our office is set up as, as a support office for these fisheries management biologists. It it wouldn't do any good to have a fisheries management goal, you know, wanting herbic or herbicides, wanting vegetation, and then for my office to go in and just completely eradicate it. So what we've got to do is align ourselves up with the fisheries management biologist and that's going to be folks like todd or, or jake norman or you know alice best out in the college station office uh greg binion down in, in south texas tim bister up on caddo lake all these biologists we have there we need to we got to work with them we've got to get you know help them to figure out how how to meet their objectives if it comes to aquatic vegetation control what do we need to do you know do, can we use and my first question is, you know, can we use a mechanical harvester or is there a biological control agent? Let's look, look at the most, the least invasive way to do it. Although a harvester may be invasive, uh, you know, let, let's try to get that done before we bring an herbicide to the table. Now, an herbicide is going to be easily the most cost effective way to do it. But before we can do any type of a, a vegetation treatment on a reservoir, Parks and Wildlife, it, requires that there be a an aquatic vegetation treatment proposal for that uh, specific plant on that reservoir and, and the first thing i'm going to do is work with you know the local fisheries biologist is it is it a problem you know alligator weed at, at lake fork jake norman doesn't see as a problem so if it's not a problem then, then we don't get involved with it but you know when we had giant salvinia show up at, at lake fork uh, Kevin Story was there, the, the biologist, the first time, and you know Kevin's like, we got to get something done, and you know a boom was put across. We were able to contain it. We were able to go back in with herbicides and do that. But before we could do any of that, we needed to work with. You know, we had Kevin's, you know, interest in, it and you know, Kevin wanted us to get rid of it, so we had to work with the controlling authority. And for Lake Fork, that was SRA. And, you know, SRA was on board with us. Well, okay, you know, Parks and Wildlife's on board, SRA's on board. Then we had to get a vegetation treatment proposal out. And this, you know, explains the process of what we're going to do. You know, are we going to use floating booms to contain it if we can? Are we going to introduce weevils or are we going to come in with herbicides? If we're using herbicides, what herbicides are we specifically going to use at what rate? How much of it are we going to use, you know, over a year's period of time? So we have to have these these treatment proposals, and they're on the Parks and Wildlife website. 
uh, the, the active proposals that are in place now. They start uh, as early as January 1st and they go all the way for the entire year, cover it. Uh, so that, you know, that's from a proximality standpoint. Once, once we get that proposal uh, prepared, it'll, there is a review board on it of, comprised of you know, anglers, uh, we have some of our contractors who are on it, some of the chemical companies that, uh, you know, provide herbicides, that type of stuff, and, and are reviewing this. Uh, they can, re they have two weeks to review that, this notification list. Once that's uh, over, then we can start the treatments. Now, on occasion, if we have an, an emergency, infest a new infestation of salvinia, let's say, uh, oh, you know, Lake Kurth, God forbid, we have it, we have it there, then, you know, that, that 14 day window is shortened down to a 24 hour period. So that way, you know, we're not allowing that plant to double twice before right. we get back there right. on it. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, let's, let's say on an issue we talked about, you know, with, with Lake Fork and, and the alligator weed around it, Jake, Jake and may not see that as an issue. Parks and Wildlife's not getting involved with it. But the homeowner who has, you know, lakefront property there doesn't like it. You know, what can they do about it? You know, we can't just not let them do something. So there, that same process exists for that homeowner. They can complete, uh, they'll work with Jake and, and work with SRA, complete a, a aquatic vegetation treatment proposal. And, and, you know, then that gets reviewed by Jake and the, the controlling authority. And then it once that they it gets their approval then it goes back out to that review committee i talked about 14 days there and then it's up to the homeowner to pay for that uh sometimes some of them want to do it themselves other times you know they'll pay a contractor to do that and i mean we see that quite a few places across the, across the state uh you know as far west as uh Hubbard creek uh and we've even had some of those instances happen out here at, at toledo bend where Todd was approving a, a homeowner to, to do a, a small treatment. And typically those are less than a third of an acre. Right. Right. So, so there is a process that is documented. It's not like, you know, anybody can just call somebody in and, you know, come spray. It's that has to be documented and it's reviewed by our biologist. Got it. All right. Well, so first you've, you've told me I might get an airboat ride at some point in the future, point in the future and go check some of this out live on the water. Yes. I'd yes. love to do that. Uh, we can I do that. They're they're eighteen foot airboats, and they have a, a Corvette engine with a uh, supercharger on it. So we're about seven hundred and fifty horses. Holy! What kind of speed will that thing run? Uh, right around fifty miles an hour. But what we need it for is the torque. Once you put a hundred gallons of water and herbicide, you know, on board. Now, you know, that's twelve hundred gallons. You get a couple of, you know, guys in there, and you know, we need that power to be able to move around in the shallows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love to do that. And I'm sure this is going to spur questions. And you've, you've told me offline that you're welcome in those questions and maybe we'll do this again and answer some of the guys' questions. And yeah, for sure. For sure. And if, if they want to reach out, you know, they can make a phone call the uh, office number here, 409-698-9121. Uh, and I'm trying to, my old, I had an old phone. It was extension two, three, five, but I think the new one is two, four, zero. So, uh, or, you know, email john.findison at tpwd.texas.gov. All right. I'll put that at the bottom of the page there since you put it out there. And uh, I think I think your black helicopter is waiting for you outside to take you <laughs> home right now. So it, it might be. So I appreciate the opportunity to help get this message out. And, you know, it's just I think the more transparent we are with what we do, the better it is for everybody to understand. Agree. And again, uh, the two things out of all of this that just really, really strike me, number one is how little, for example, Toledo Bend you guys actually sprayed. Do you have any sense of how much of Rayburn you sprayed last year? Uh, that, the Rayburn contracts are all being conducted by the Corps of Engineers, but that's uh, just a little over 2,000 acres, if I remember right. Out of 118,000 acres, so right. less right. than 2% of the lake. And then the whole fragmentation thing on the hydrilla about that's really right. the only way for it to grow. That, that kind of boggles my mind. So that is, don't forget the tubers and Tyrion. So yeah. 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 That. But anyway, so thank you for your time. And uh, I'm sure we'll connect again, uh, both by zoom and also hopefully in person as well. 
oh sure for sure i maybe i'll get a, a tour of the kinsmith fishing world headquarters in zavala texas that doesn't take long <laughs> i'm looking forward to it though there you go <laughs> thanks john we'll see you soon all right thanks again